Hi cats and kittens, it's Amy from Savor Salvage Scent and I hope you are great. Um, we are in the midst of the heat of the summer here in beautiful Cleveland, Ohio. So I thought, gosh, I just probably have a few more weeks to talk about summer perfumes or warm weather perfumes in context. So I thought today might be a fun time to focus on Guerlain's Aqua Allegoria line. Um, and before I get into that, <laughs> um, those of you who have subscribed, thank you so much. Um, I love that we're building a community together. Um, for those of you who are new to the channel, this focuses mostly on fragrance, but also like DIY projects um, and collecting. And I hope if you find this content interesting, you'll give the video a thumbs up and that you'll hit the subscribe button and stay in touch. And I love feedback and comments. If you have questions, if you want to um, educate me or, or um, pass on an idea, I would love that too. So um, for those of you who don't know, I have been collecting uh, perfumes for about 30 years. And I have slowly over time found out that uh, Guerlain is one of my most favorite perfume houses. If I looked at my collection of about, I have about 200 plus bottles of perfume, I would say about 30 are Guerlain. Um, and for those of you who aren't familiar, the Aqua Allegoria line, let me read you actually a little bit of description by Guerlain because I think it really wraps it up nicely. Um, but they say that this is a continually renewed collection that pays homage to the wonders of nature and beautiful raw materials. Um, but then they close, and I think this is most important, um, calling them cheerful fragrances that represent happy moments. Um, and so I would say, these are not um, heavy projecting, heavy hitting perfumes. They're very much, uh, what, no matter what their uh, makeup is, very much like a cologne. Um, these are scents that probably, some of them have more longevity or impact than others, but I would say um, it's kind of along the lines of like a men's cologne or a um, 4711, something like that as far as its longevity. And, um, they usually need reapply during the day if you want the scent to remain. However, they're super affordable, especially for Guerlain. Um, and they're just so truly uplifting, cheerful, invigorating. They do tend to kind of, um, although some of them have many, many, many notes, uh, like the description says, they tend to kind of focus on maybe a couple or they tend to be named after one, um, something like that. So I'm gonna share with you today six of the Aqua Allegorias that are in my collection. Just um, of note, <laughs> um, all of these can still be found, although I'm, I was surprised I looked on their website today, not one of them is still for sale on their website. So all of these have to be purchased through um, like online portals, the Bay uh, Fragrance Net is a great um, seller of Guerlain that kind of thing. The first few that I'm gonna talk about are harder to find, a little more expensive, but the last four are still easy to find and very economical. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about the line and the bottle. Um, originally, so Guerlain's been around forever. I cannot remember the founding date, but a couple hundred years, I wanna say. And the Aqua Allegoria line has been around for a little over 20 years. I think um, 1999, I believe, was the first, the first one or two were released. Um, and they, um, the, the bottles have changed a tiny bit over that time, um, but for the most part, they have this kind of bee bottle shape with kind of the honeycomb shape at the top, with the exception of one of these. Um, the, the labels changed a tiny bit, I'll show you. Um, but for the most part, it's been pretty similar. And for those of you who don't know, uh, the B is kind of the emblem of Guerlain. And my understanding is, um, what year was I wrote it down here? Okay, um, one, uh, one of the specific Guerlain perfumes, I think it was one of the clones, um, was created in 1853 and it was, um, created for Eugenie, who was uh, betrothed to Napoleon III. And this gift was created as 
her special perfume for her wedding day. And it was presented originally for the first time in one of these bottles. Now it was way, 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 way more ornate. Like it literally had gold bottles or gold bees all over it. But that was kind of when this bee bottle um, started to happen. So yeah, so that's where that gets its inspiration. Um, and I would say the, the, um, the bottles tend to range from like 2.5 to 4.2, I think. And the original price um, ranges from nine, I think 90, 60 or 90 for the, like the 2.5, 3.4. .4. And then I think the 4.2 usually goes for around 130 to 150, something like that. Um, the good news is even the ones that are harder to find can still be found economically like under that listing, original listing price. And the ones that are more recent, you can find super affordably, like between, you know, $25 and $35. So I think it's a great way to explore a really amazing house with just incredible ingredients. And to me, the, the Aqua Allegoria line really teaches my nose because it does focus on kind of specific uh, notes. And so each one is kind of a learning process for me. And what's really cool about these, of the six I own, they're all very diverse. They're, they're similar in that they kind of feel like colognes and they're uplifting and refreshing, but they do kind of focus on different notes and they all have kind of different experiences. So that's really cool to me. Um, Okay, so let me talk to you about the six that I own. And again, there's many, many, many of them. I, my guess is there have been 20 or 30 uh, produced. So while I have quite a few of these, I have many, many more that I would love to explore. A lot of them have already left commission because this is, again, a collection that kind of goes in and out. And um, there are a few on my want list, which I'll talk about later in the video. So um, the first scent I'm going to share with you is, let's see. Second, <laughs> is um, Anicia Bella, and that is this large bottle here. And you'll see this is one of the older labels. It's got the same shape as kind of like the honeycomb. And this was produced in 2004. I'm kind of going in the order that I purchased or discovered these. They're not always in order chron chronological order. Um, this again, this is discontinued and this has probably been one of the ones that's been discontinued the longest and is hardest to find and therefore a little pricier. Um, again, produced first in 2004. The nose, I hope I'm pronouncing this name right, is um, Orlin Guichard. Um, and oh my gosh, does he have a long uh, list. I mean, I, I venture to say I've not, many, I've not seen many lists longer as far as perfumes created. He's created for bone number nine. He created Escada Moon Sparkle. He created Gucci Guilty and many other Gucci perfumes. Um, did tons for Issey Miyake, Kenzo, Mugler, Shiseido. I mean, the list just went on and on. So really gifted and experienced nose. Um, the notes for this are orange, licorice, and musk, violet, cassia, and I wish I could read my own writing sometimes, green tea, basil, jasmine, anise, um, and I think that's about it. Um, so what's incredible about this, okay, first of all, I'm just gonna say I love licorice and anise. A lot of people do not love it, and I'll just tell you this. So um, <laughs> if you don't like those two things, don't even don't even think about it don't even think about it if you like them this is rad like this is amazing so I would say this is um, one of the stronger aqua allegories it stays with my skin for some time but you get kind of every le level of anisey licorice licorice scent so you literally get like I first get licorice like I get like strong black licorice um, this is not one of those where they have tried to make it powdery or candy like it you've got like black licorice you've got anise you've got all these other herbs um basil comes to mind um etc etc that they smell licorice too 
Um, so you've got like every, this is licorice to me on every level on every front. Uh, so it's really, I am a lover of licorice and that's why I hunted this down. I love it. Um, it's beautiful. Again, it's uplifting. I would say this is one of the ones that's a little more herbal, not so cotton sweet, fluffy as sometimes Guerlain can be. Guerlain is powdery a lot of the time and this is not a super sweet powder. This is definitely more of an herbal thing going on here. Um, this is again discontinued. Um, I just saw this on the net for $52 um, and I think I paid $43. So it, you know, if you keep your eye on this, you can still get it at a pretty decent rate. So Aqua Allegoria Anisia Bella. So <laughs> next on the list, oh, I had to choose a favorite. Oh, this is hard. This might, I, if this is one of my two favorites, I would say. This is um, Angelique Lilas. God, I hope I'm pronouncing that right. So essentially a combination of the Angelique uh, flower and lilac, white lilac in this case. Um, this was produ uh, produced first in 2007. The nose is Jean-Paul Guerlain. This is probably the most expensive one that I own because it's pretty hard to find. So, um, this is going for about a hundred right now. I think I paid about half of that. So again, if you watch, you might be able to find it cheaper, do a trade, something like that. Um, but um, just to give you an idea, um, Angelica is like a, I've never smelled the plant on its own, but over and over I've heard it described as like musky green aromatic. And I do know that it is, I believe the plant that um, sources the liqueur chartreuse, which also kind of has like a herbal, almost again licorice to me, uh, kind of feel. So let me read you the notes. The top notes are jasmine, orange, and pink pepper. Uh, the mid notes are ylang ylang, angelica, and lilac, white lilac in this case, and the base notes are Virginia cedar and heliotrope. And for those of you who are not familiar, heliotrope is like a flower that has like a cluster of little bluish purple flowers, and a lot of people refer to it as a uh, cherry pie plant because it has like a powdery cherry, almondy kind of scent all together. So this angelique lilas, oh. My God, I just, why do you love what you love? I'm telling you, I was smelling this today and I, in fact, I'm gonna put it on my skin again. I sprayed it this morning and I thought, I think this is one of my top 10. Like, this is so good and I'm not ready to dish out a hundred bucks again right now, but if it ever, if I can find a, a bottle cheaply again, this is gonna go into second or third bottle mode. Uh, Cause I don't think I wanna be without it. So first of all, I'll say, I'm a lilac uh, lover, and I can't remember if lilac is a fantasy scent. I think it might be. So fantasy scents are when you cannot extract the actual scent from the plant through traditional perfume making, and so therefore noses create a, an accord or grouping of things that smell like lilac. I think that's the case with lilac. It's really, really hard for me for as many lilac scents as there might be to find one that really smells like lilac. What I love about this is it is, um, it's got the Angelique going on too, but it is definitely, oh, you get such a smell that like that you get in the air from a lilac in the um, spring. And the um, Angelique brings something a little musky sweet to it. And then the fact that like heliotrope is in here too, and jasmine and orange. It is just, it is intoxicating. I mean, just beautiful. I would say, well, I think anyone should wear what they like. I would call this a more florally, um, perhaps even more feminine scent as far as the way perfumes are often marketed. But again, anybody could rock this. It's gorgeous. Um, very floral, um, but I think a unique floral. Like this is one, when I smell, I'm like, I have smelled nothing like this. So this is uh, Aqua Allegoria Angelique Lilas um, by Guerlain. So that was number two. <clears throat> um, number three, I would say, is probably one of the most talked about um, Aqua Allegorias. 
it's probably the one that I've used the most. I bought this just a few years ago and I'm almost out and so I just bought another bottle today because I don't want to be without it. It's super affordable. This is Limon Verde. Um, I was lucky enough to see a few reviews on this. People are really mixed with Aqua Allegoria. Some people who are like really into longevity cannot get past the fact that this works like a clone and that you have to reapply. I don't mind that at all. <laughs> like if it's good and it and it, I get at least a few hours from it, I'm cool. I had seen a review by, um, oh, I forget her name, but she goes by Beauty Meow and she's terrific. I think she's really like very real and authentic and lovely and has a really interesting collection. She was praising Limon Verde and I'm so glad I got this. Um, when I went to the Guerlain shop a few years ago to Paris, um, I smelled this at the store and I was like, oh my gosh, it's so good. And I would say Limon Verde is my favorite lime centered scent. And I think it's still so, um, you know, lime is often used in fougeres or what people associate to be like barbershop scents. So kind of clean, uplifting. And because of that, I think it gets associated as like a pretty common scent. But I would say this is a really sophisticated um, lime and I have said before and I'll say again, this is a great scent to buy somebody who perhaps is either just getting into perfume or likes to feel uplifted or fresh, but doesn't like something deeply like darky perfume, like really like, what should I say, deep and dark, uh, like incense-y. People who are into those kind of perfumes can still really dig this. I have a couple friends who just said, you know, I, I, you know like I'm interested, but um, I don't like a lot of perfumes. This is a winner. So let me tell you a little bit more about it, um, other than my feelings. This was first released in 2014, so somewhat recently, and this is around the time, I believe, when, or maybe just before, where uh, Terry Wasser started working for Guerlain, and many of you will know him. He's a genius and, again, has a crazy long list of creations. He has created, I don't know, maybe 50 or 100 perfumes for Guerlain, just that alone. Created Dior Addict, um, gosh, has also created um, within the Guerlain line, um, what's it called, Black Perfecto. Um, he created for Lancome and just brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. And has, um, I think he still oversees Guerlain now, but has taken Guerlain into the modern day. Um, and broken away, not, I shouldn't say broken away, been able to transition from the family, which is very hard to do. So I think just really brilliant. The top note is lime alone. The mid notes are um, green notes and tropical fruit fig sugar cane, which I think does come out. I'll talk a little bit about that. And then the base note is tonka. So, you know, I wouldn't know that I would throw together lime with tonka, which is, you know, kind of vanillic, a little, um, earthier, spicier, less sweet. Um, but you get the sugar cane too, and you get a little bit of the tropical fruit. Oh my gosh, all of that just makes this sexy, aromatic, clean smelling, sophisticated lime scent. It is awesome. It is, to me, this is like the easiest reach ever in the summer. If you want to feel like a hundred, a million bucks, sorry, hundred bucks would be my most days. If you want to feel like a million bucks and little effort, <laughs> this lime, this Limon Verde by Guerlain is the bee's knees. No, no pun intended. Okay. This you can find pretty cheaply still. I would say depending on the size of the bottle, it ranges from like 40 to $45. Um, I found it for 30 or 35, I want to say. So if you watch, you can um, find it cheaply. And in fact, I just bought a bottle today and I think I paid 33, something like that. So again, really, really great. Highly recommend a favorite for sure. So that was Limon Verde. <laughs> okay, next on the list is Nerolia Bianca. Let's see, this is one of my bigger bottles. This is such a pretty colored juice. It's kind of between rose and orange. It's really beautiful. Um, okay, so this, um, 
is one of the ones that I think just recently went out of production because I don't see it on the website, but you can still find it really affordably, like 30 to $35 for one of the big models. Um, it was first released in 2013. Again, um, Vosser is the nose. And the notes are Neroli, Bitter Orange, Orange, Petty Grain, <laughs> Orange Leaf, and Orange Blossom. So, um, I, another, I'm a lover of orange, anything orange, orange blossom, uh, Neroli. And for those of you who aren't familiar, Neroli is basically uh, the name of the way that the bitter orange flower is extracted, I think through Effleurage Lake, I think fat um, instead of water. Hope I'm right about that. But um, I get literally every facet of orange, bitter orange, the stem, the leaf, the floral, the peel, I mean all of it. And um, for Neroli lovers, oh, this is a dream and an affordable dream. There are a lot of expensive uh, Neroli perfumes that are done well. This to me is great. It smells so much like what you smell in the air when, especially if you live like in places where uh, orange flower actually blooms. Um, it's so beautiful. This is not super sweet though. So people who don't dig a little bitterness from like a true orange smell or petty grain may not like this. But to me, if you're into the real scent of nature or the plant, it is incredible. And again, this is another one where I feel like it's a freshie, but it's sophisticated. And like, I've given this as a gift to fancy folks and they love it. So um, Aqua Allegoria Neroli, Neroleia Bianca, beautiful, beautiful perfume, great price. And again, all of these, I'm into like, you dig it, you wear it, doesn't matter where you on, on the gender spectrum of any spectrum, but I would say, in my mind, this is perfectly unisex. Like, if it smells good, it smells good, and it smells good. Okay, so, two more. Um, oh my gosh. So, again, showing the diversity you know, I think what's interesting is for a lot of people, fresh scents or aromatics always have to do with citrus. That just is. And some of these do, not all though, a couple. Um, but now we're, again, this has, has some citrus, but this is um, predominantly a tea scent. So this is Aqua Allegoria um, Tea Azura. I don't know if you can see that the sun is so bright today. Um, this is more like a light, beautiful light blue color. And I got this, this can be found pretty affordably. Um, I think I paid only like 26 or 28 for this. Um, again, I think it's just recently left production because again, it can find, you can find it pretty easily, but it's no longer on their website. The first year it was released was 2015. Again, the nose is Vasser. Um, the top notes are bergamot, lemon, yuzu, and grapefruit. The mid notes are green tea, chamomile, jasmine. The base notes are musk, cologne, C-A-L-O-N-E. And for those of you who aren't familiar, this is new to me. I, I could not pick that out. Um, this supposedly is a chemical kind of compound that smells like, like sea breeze or fresh air. Um, and then this also has vanilla. And so here's what's really amazing to me. I am a huge tea lover and I was on this kick last winter where I was like, I need to get an array of tea fragrances so I can really smell different kinds of tea, understand how they work. I love, I love drinking tea. Um, it has a calming effect. So I just was really excited to find uh, a highly rated tea fragrance. Here's what's surprising to me about this one. Most of these scents I would say are pretty linear in that when you spray an aqua allegory at first, it's not going to change a ton. While it might soften and you might have to reapply, you're not going to get like three personalities in an experience. The thing that's interesting about Tia Zura is you do kind of get two personalities and it's kind of fun because I like both of them. So when you first spray it, you get all of these different kinds of tea notes. So like almost every one of these notes have been used in tea. Bergamot, lemon, yuzu, grapefruit, green tea, chamomile, jasmine, all that stuff has been used in one kind of tea or another. So it's a true tea scent. But what's really incredible to me because of the base notes is when it softens, you get this gorgeous vanillic scent with a hint of tea. It is so beautiful. It's, 
And I think it's funny, I, I don't think too many people talk about this one, which is a shame to me because, again, I find it to be not your average tea scent. Tea scent. It's very sophisticated, really beautiful. And again, I think this is perfectly a unisent. Unisex. It's just gorgeous. Why don't we call it a unisent? I think I just made up a new word. Okay. Um, but just beautiful. I would uh, recommend this for gifts. Um, it's beautiful. Unless, of course, a person doesn't like tea. There you have it. Um, but again, I think you get this extra surprise that when it dries down, it's this beautiful, soft, vanillic scent without being candy-like. It's just really nice and vanillic. Um, so, Aqua Allegoria, Tiazura. Beautiful. Um, okay, last, my most recently purchased is Rosa Pop. Um, let me see, did I spray this earlier? Yes, okay. So, <clears throat> mm, this smells so good. Oh my gosh. Okay. So this one, I think I said um, in another video where I talked about this, if you've ever experienced violet candies, like Chowards Violet Mints, which violet is somewhat on its own kind of powdery and gives an effect of almost like the powderiness of powdered sugar or candy. Um, this is to me the rose version of that, this rose a pop. This first came out in 2016. Um, again, I think it's just recently, like real recently taken out of commission. Um, you can find this really cheaply. I think I paid 32 for 4.2 ounce. Um, the nose isn't, isn't listed, but my guess is it's Wasser based on you know, the fact that he's, I think, still creating there. Um, the top notes are red berries and lemon. The mid notes are rose, peony, and violet, and the base notes are woody notes. Um, and so, what's so cool about this, I also think this is a great scent if you are wanting to kind of dip your toe into the rose fragrance realm, um, but maybe you don't like a super, super strong rose, or you're just getting your nose used to it. This to me is like a powdery candied rose, and with that little bit of red berry and lemon, it just has a, a beautiful, kind of slightly sweet, powdery, rosy, but almost like it reminds me of, and I know that a few Guerlains smell this way, of like makeup, the scent that makeup has, the scent that the powder or lipstick has, or even the inside of a handbag, like which has both that makeup scent, but probably a little bit of, tiny bit of suede. So, Rosa Pop is kind of this beautiful candied rose. Um, and again, you can find this really, really affordably. So those are my six Guerlain Aqua Allegorias. I would love to hear from you. My bet is some of you collect them too or have experienced Aqua Allegorias. Um, I would love to hear more about the ones that you've experienced. Are there any that I don't have on my list that I need? I'll tell you the ones that are on my list right now. Some of these, unfortunately, are a little... Um, they haven't hit the the discount sites yet so they're still kind of high so I'm keeping my eye out but I am really excited to try Herba Fresca that one you can still find online and my understanding is it's kind of mint like herbs uh, focused on mint and other herbs so that sounds fun to me um, I'm really interested in ginger picante because I love ginger there's one called Orange Solea, so I think that would be cool because it would be different than my Neroli one, which is based on the whole plant, but instead on the fruit and the peel. And then I'm really interested in trying Coconut Fizz too. I, I've read a lot that where a lot of coconut fragrances get like super beachy and focus on other like tropical flowers and things that feel like the beach. This is supposed to be a sparkling kind of light coconut, which sounds really, really good to me. Um, so that's what's on my list. What's missing? Um, yeah, I would love to hear from you if any of you collect or wear Aqua Allegoria. Um, thanks so much, and I'll talk to you soon. Have a good night. Bye.